that issue. Meanwhile, our top story today, one of the White House ones perhaps would like to go away, Benghazi, especially after yesterday, where four Americans who heroically served their nation lost their lives, and now we're learning that House Republicans will announce the formation of a select committee to investigate the Benghazi attacks. This after the explosive bombshell emails, that's what I was talking about all this week and yesterday particularly, showing a coordinated effort by senior White House aides to place blame for the attack on an internet video. All this leading to a testy exchange between our own Brett Baer and one of the aides who had a hand in those now infamous talking points and who also had one outrageous answer for Brett. Why? Did you also change attacks to demonstrations in the talking points? Uh, maybe. I don't really remember. You don't remember? Dude, this was like two years ago. We're still talking about the Dude, most mundane it is the thing process. That everybody is talking about. We're talking about the process of editing talking points. That's what bureaucrats do all we, day long. Your, is, your producers edit the, scripts the key multiple part is times. Dude. Uh, you know what? This was an important part of security in our history as this country for this country. He didn't take notes. He didn't jot anything down, Jedediah. And is this guy kidding me with the way he's addressing Brett Baer? Dude, as if he's sitting in a college fraternity party and having a conversation, people died. You, you're not allowed to just say, well, I don't remember what I did. And you know, that was a long time ago and it's long overdue. And why are we talking about this and have that tone? Totally disrespectful in an interview and totally disrespectful for those people who are sitting at home, who lost family members in this and who want questions answered. I thought it was a disrespect. And you know, it really marks the tone of, of the administration's response to this in general. We sat here yesterday in this hour, watched mm -hmm. that um, the press briefing, Jay Carney, there was laughter at times. Yeah. The defensive Shameful. posture that he takes. Shouldn't we all be demanding answers right now? The defensive posture and also the condescending nature. You yes. know, he, he attacked our own Ed Henry from Fox News. And there were other reporters in the room, finally, who were starting to ask some questions. Kirsten Powers is here, as I mentioned. And of course, uh, this is your political party, Democrats, who are now on the defensive, as Sandra just mentioned. When you hear comments like what you just heard from Vitor, what does that tell you about this administration? Well, it, it seems that they're not taking it very seriously uh, and, and, and that they I think they actually sincerely believe what they're saying, which is, is not that big of a deal. And that we're just really? talking about some talking points. Right. This is what they keep saying. Well, of course, the talking points were the only way we're able to find anything else and find out anything about what was going on. So it's not really about the talking points, per se. It's just that that's the only information that we have about what's going on. And we just first learned that the president wasn't in the Situation Room last night on that yeah. interview. You know, yes. just basic facts have not been given out. We still don't know where the president was what, or what he was doing. Well, he was it, somewhere in the White House. Was he in remember, residence? This was, was this, he in his old office? I mean, what does that this mean? Was, this was going to be yeah. the most transparent presidency right. in the history of presidencies. Which has been mocked And now we find out reporters. 20 months later that President Obama wasn't yeah. even in the situation Situation room when one of our embassies was our consulates was under attack and people were dying. Americans well, yeah, were dying. And, they're, and they're very transparent when they want to show the situation pic room but, but, pictures. But, but, all let me just, let me just finish convenient. this. So he was in the White House, according to Tommy Vitor. He was at, President Obama was in the White House, spent the night in the White House. Think about what he did the next day. He made a speech from the Rose Garden and then got an Air, got an Air Force One and flew to Vegas for a fundraiser. Now, if that's not tone deaf, so so then you go, well, let's talk about what Jay Carney said about yeah. those talking points that, that they, they held up, that they finally released unredacted. And we find out that, yes, um, they were told, those, uh, Susan Rice was told, this is, the, this is what we're going with. It, we're going to blame it on the video. Go with this. It's just one cover-up after the other from the most transparent well, presidency in, in the history of presidency. And we know it's, told by the terrible. White House because the former deputy director, Mike Morrell of the CIA, said, well, I looked up and was certainly surprised to see that we were blaming it on the video on the Internet. Jedediah, the select committee, tell me what your reaction is to see Republicans now getting ready to push for this. I think it's long overdue. I think a lot of people have been calling for this for a really long time just because we're not getting any answers. I think wanting Kerry to, to get involved now and have to answer tough questions. I think Barack Obama is going to get a lot of tough questions. People are saying let's exhaust every measure we can here because this administration has been very hesitant to tell the truth. So let's do everything we possibly can, put them on the line and absolutely demand answers to these questions. And I think that's the, the appropriate next step to make that happen. You know, Sandra, you pointed to something as kind of a, a trend or a theme mm -hmm. in the reaction from the White House. It's not just coming from the White House or the spokesperson, this former spokesperson, Tommy Vitor. Uh, Congresswoman Nancy Pelosi, let's watch what she has to say. What I will say is, again, 
diversion, subterfuge. Benghazi, Benghazi, Benghazi. Why aren't we talking about something else? Whatever was in that, what, what I know of what I've read in the press about the, um, uh, that those emails were very consistent with what was put out there before. A subterfuge. Why are we still talking about this? Because there's four dead Americans. And by the way, there's the risk of our national security at stake. We have an obligation to find out what happened that day. We are demanding answers. It's unbelievable. And, we, and moving on from the defensive tone of this administration, you, you hear those words from Nancy Pelosi and you wonder why everybody isn't seeking these answers and demanding those. Why isn't she? Why does can, she can want I to divert the conversation? I don't know that they're defensive. I think they're arrogant. I I think they're they're annoyed by the constant question. Why is Fox always asking asking the questions? So like Benghazi's over with. It's 20 months ago. It's time to get over with. Let me just point something out. Whether it's Nancy Pelosi, do you want to go? Yeah, oh. we're, yeah, we have the. We're